Hello there and welcome to EO Sakura. This video is a part of the space series and in this one I am going to show you how to create a flight through an asteroid belt. So the main things you are going to find in this video is how to work with particles, how to emit from different objects, how to control the particles using the similar objects, a couple of techniques on animation and uh, rendering particles. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm going to first start by creating a rough storyboard explaining my shot. I want to start with a complete star field with absolutely no other 3D elements. And then the camera starts to tilt up, therefore you can see the star field moving downwards. Now, when the camera tilts up, I want an asteroid field to come into view from the top. Next, the camera starts to dolly inwards. And once it's do dollied inwards, you can see that the entire asteroid field has filled in the entire shot. So basically this is the entire uh, shot which I want to work on in Nuke. And now let me go ahead and break this down and show you the different elements involved. Uh, let me just say that uh, I'm looking at the entire shot from the side view. So in that case, uh, if my camera is here in one uh, section the star field is going to be on the opposite side and the asteroids is going to be exactly in the center of the shot now first off the camera is going to start by looking downwards so therefore my camera is going to start somewhere in this angle where it's looking only at the star field and not at the asteroids so now the camera is going to first start moving upwards and then it's going to move forwards so when it's going to rotate or move upwards it's going to take the asteroids into view and then when it moves inwards or dollies in it's going to pass through the asteroids so pretty much this is the entire shot now the different elements involved are first the image or the star field which uh, image which I'm going to use at the backdrop and also all the asteroid images which I'm going to use as sprites in the entire scene so let me just show you where I'm going to get these images from and how I uh, processed all of them. Now coming to the different external resources I have used, the first one is the star field by Butch Wekne on DeviantArt and the second one is the asteroid pack by Hamid on DeviantArt. Now both of these resources are completely free and you can go ahead and download them without any memberships. You can find the links for these pages in the description of the video or on the website. Now after you have downloaded them, the only change that uh, had to be made was that this asteroid pack which I obtained was basically in one huge single file. So therefore each and every particular asteroid had to be broken apart into its own separate file. So therefore I went ahead took this file into Photoshop and I created this image sequence uh, with all of these asteroids individually in their own PNG files. Now the reason I did this is because it's easier to load in all these images as a single image sequence rather than breaking them apart with a nuke. Right? So basically these are all the resources from external sites that I'm using. Now we can go ahead and get started in nuke. Now coming to nuke, to follow along with this tutorial, you should be running nuke x. Uh, because this tutorial makes heavy use of particle systems. So once you have it running, let's go into project settings and set a few things up. I already have a, a particular low name and location set up for this. So I'll go ahead and add in these values. And um, I want this entire uh, scene to be, this shot to be about 10 seconds. So I'll set it to 240 frames. The resolution is going to be HD and also I want the proxy scale to be one fourth so that uh, I, it doesn't hang up when I'm trying to record. Now the basic scene is set up I can go ahead and start blocking out the entire shot. Now the main thing I want to do is block out the entire 3D scene. So let me go ahead and start by creating a scene node. I connected it to my viewer I'll first create a camera. Now with the camera there, I'll create a card for the actual background image, which is a star field. So this card, I can use a Z value to push it back. So it's in the background using the Z value. Now I'll read in the star field image, which I already have. So that one is pretty much done. 
now I need to create another card which is going to be the emitter for the asteroid and uh, right now uh, just as a placeholder I'm going to create a simple spear so that I can see exactly where it is okay so with this spear I can move it to the side I'll scale it up okay I can scale it down as such okay so as you can see uh, the camera is there my asteroid field is there and this is my image plane at the back so this pretty much does my 3d scene completely now the next step of the blocking process is to animate the camera and have the basic camera animation uh, to ready from the this point onwards itself so to create this let me go ahead and select the camera I'll set the translate and the rotate keys now I can switch over to the camera in the viewer and control click in the camera icon to be make it the active view I can go ahead and start setting this up the way I want okay so I have the camera initial frame set up uh, at around uh, 50th frame I want the asteroid field to be visible so I'll tilt the camera upwards okay now with the camera rotated there I can go to the 240th frame and dolly inwards so that I'm moving towards the asteroid field okay now just because I'm not able to see exactly what's happening on the viewer I can press S and it brings out the viewer properties here in 3D I can tell headlamp so I can see a bit more 3D than I can by default so this gives me this result so this is the animation I have now what I can do is uh, select the camera go into the curve editor as you can see these are the elements I have here so in rotation I have this very harsh rotations going on right now so let me go ahead and edit them I'll set them out here and horizontal on translates I'll set them to cubic so I have a very smooth transition to different elements and at the end I want them to be slow in the beginning I want them fast so yeah perfect okay so now I basically have this I have a smooth movement towards the asteroid field but in the beginning I have this zooming out effect I created that by mistake so I don't really want that so to remove that I can directly take the camera is the z-axis movement which gives you that uh, in and out movement so I can go ahead and edit that quite easily here okay done so now I should not have any of the z movement perfect now one thing to note here as you can see there is this plane which is being blocked out at the bottom uh, it's completely plain so I can go take the card and uh, hopefully translate works yes I can translate it down because at the top anyway it's not going to be visible after this uh, plane after this uh, star field okay perfect so my entire blocking is done So this is how my camera is and my animation should be looking like this. Okay, as I look at this, uh, one thing I can see is that the camera just tilts upwards and it just keeps going straight. Instead, let's say I want to change that. I want the camera to actually go and look at the asteroids from above. So let me select the camera. And on the 398th frame, I'll actually move it up. and I'll rotate the camera downwards okay so at around 50th frame it's going to be looking up so what you now have is a camera which is going to tilt up move forward and then go down right so in the end frame I want the camera to become static again so done in the curve editor I'm just going to look at the rotation curves once more 
I'll just go add them or put them all on cubic. So let's see what that gives me. Okay, done. Perfect. So I have this entire scene set up, animated and ready to go. Now the next step is uh, going ahead and creating the asteroids here in this region near the spear. Now to create these asteroids, I'll just go ahead and demo a small example here on the side before I put them in the scene itself. So asteroids, I'm going to use a particle emitter to create them. So let me go ahead and put that in the scene. So as you can see, the particles are being emitted from a single point. So they're just from this long streak here. So if I wanted them to be emitted from a single plane or any other object, I can go ahead and take a 3D object and use that as the emit input. So now you can see the particles are being emitted from this plane. Right? Now let me go ahead and put that as a flat plane and scale it up and increase the number of particles so I can show you what's happening now. Okay, now once I've increased it, you can see that the um, particles are being emitted at uh, particular points, which are the vertices. So that really is too uniform and that's uh, not going to look very neat. So that's why I'm going to go into particle emitter. I'm going to tell I want the particles emitted not from points, but from faces randomly. So as soon as I do that, you can see it creates an entire cloud of particles for me. Also, you can see all the particles are right now just moving upwards. So that is not really what I want. I want them moving in random directions. So I can tell uh, the direction to be randomized. So therefore, they're going to be randomly emitted from that object without taking any normals into consideration, only outward direction. Now, once I have this set up, as you can see, if it if the particles keep going off as such, I need a drag field or something as such to make sure they maintain a particular distance or direction and such. But that's going to get too tedious. So instead, what I'm going to do is uh, use a frame hold option, which is basically, uh, I believe here, yeah, frame hold. I can use this, connect it into my emitter. And if I look at this, by setting it to any particular frame, my particles are frozen on that frame. I can move through the timeline and the particles do not get updated. So this is how I'm going to basically set, uh, uh, basically freeze all the particles in any location which I want them. Now, let me go back into the emitter. I'll reduce the number of particles. There are several options here which I have to work with when I'm using particles. So first thing, I'm going to increase the velocity range so I have a bit more randomness so they don't look all messed uh, in one particular location. I'll reduce the velocity so they are much closer. Okay, now uh, once I have this, uh, if I want these particles to have any particular uh, shape or uh, any kind of detail, I can go ahead and add them in as the particle input. So as you can see there's a particle input, I can put that in. So let me go ahead and take a color bars and put that in as particle. So as you can see, there are loads of color bars everywhere in the scene. Now, the problem with this is, let me increase the size so it's easier to observe. Okay, now the, uh, this might look quite neat, but the problem with this is that if your camera actually rotates, so as you can see here, when it rotates, it does not actually look quite 3D. It looks kind of, it gives you a headache after you look at it for a while. So you can't really use it on large images. So you have to make sure you know exactly what is happening. So these are nothing but sprites. Uh, for more information, please uh, look at the video which I mentioned in the comment section. It's from the Foundry. They explain more about particles. Now, instead of color bars, I could have picked any image I want. So let's say one is color bars and I'm going to pick another one which is a checkerboard. I'm going to connect this as another particle. And when I do that, you can see randomly these two have been assigned to this. So this is how I can use the same particle emitter and connect two different inputs and use them as uh, objects here. So this is what I'm going to do with the asteroids. But the problem with creating an asteroid plane using this method is I can't really read in uh, 50 different files at once. So instead I'm going to read them in as a sequence. So I'll go and bring in the asteroid image sequence. Open that in. So if I view that in the viewer, you'll see that I have different sizes of asteroids till 53 frame and then it stops. 
so basically what I want the computer to do is go ahead and use each and every one of these at different frames so I can connect this read node to the particle and if I come back to the frame hold you can see that this particles have been applied but the problem with this uh, right now is that the pre-multiplication so I can go ahead just apply pre-mult and that should take care of all these particles yeah now if you can observe that there are not a lot of variations in the particles pretty much all of them look exactly the same so the reason for that is there are a few options I can tweak on the particle emitter the way the particles are going to uh, get assigned with this asteroid is that each particle has a number a particular name which is assigned to it and that is basically here at the bottom so now first thing it is telling us the input uh, is going to select the ID number randomly meaning the uh, object is going to be assigned it randomly and it's going to start at the first frame whereas I don't want it to start at the first frame and randomly keep assigning them I want it set randomly so therefore each particle is going to get a random frame throughout so that one is set now the next thing is when the particles are advancing I don't want them to advance in steps I don't want the ID to keep changing I don't I want them to stay constant uh, because of the frame hold you're unable to see what the result is going to be but uh, this is what you have to set if your particle uh, uh, changing the different uh, whatever images are assigned to them over time so you can just set this and as you can see I have an easy asteroid field which is created now a few things to note here when you're looking at this field all these images are aligned exactly the way you had set them up so if you want to rotate one particular image you can go ahead and rotate the original source file itself and it'll be rotated here so let me just show you what I mean I'll just go ahead take the asteroid PNG file I'll apply a translate okay transform and with this transform added in I can go ahead and rotate this and you can see all the asteroids start getting rotated as easy as that so uh, the obviously the center portion of this is not set so therefore they are also clipping in okay. so this is how I'm going to start creating the asteroids now to create the entire asteroid belt let me go ahead and put this entire scene uh, this entire section into the final scene here so I'll connect that here now if I go look at my scene you can see the camera is there my spear is there the placeholder and the asteroid is over here now I really want the asteroids over there in that location so I can directly go ahead to the card move it to that location I can make sure I'm only looking at the card I can scale it up okay I'll disable the spear so I can see what's happening so as you can see the camera is actually moving through an asteroid field this time to uh, be able to see it properly let me go to the particle emitter and increase the scale of the particle the size of the particle so those can be seen I'll go into the camera view and back play so the asteroids come into view and I'm flying through them now first thing I notice is that there are too few number of asteroids I want more I can go to the particle emitter and increase the emission rate or I can go to the particle frame hold and increase it to anywhere between the particle life so 10 so it gives me more particles now okay Okay, now for the next step, uh, if I come out of the 3D scene, uh, you can see that all the particles are evenly distributed. Uh, the size does not vary a lot. It does vary, but uh, the sizes are pretty constant. What I want is uh, the particles which are very close to the camera to be smaller and particles further away from the camera to just vary in size I want majority of the larger ones to be exactly in the center so if I want to do any of that I need to be able to map all those properties onto the card uh, the actual card which is emitting all of these so let me go and uh, create a emission map to go ahead and create these properties so 
I'll come back and I'll create a constant. I'll look at the constant. Uh, it is actually set to the root format right now. So let me go ahead and set it to a 1K resolution texture. So right now it's a black constant. I'll go ahead and apply a radial to this. So this radial is exactly in the center right now. So let me go ahead and push it across completely. So it's a pure radial map going from the edge to the center. I'll go ahead and put this in as an image on the card. So now my card has this radial map applied throughout. Now if I come back to my 3D scene, you can see that uh, the particles are just being emitted as normal. But now if I go ahead and tell I want the scale or the size of the particles to change according to any one of these properties like red color, immediately the image property, the plane property is being considered because red color is varying from the center to the edge the particles are also going to make use of the same uh, property. So like this I can go ahead and start changing different values and get different results. So similarly I can don't need to only I don't have to only change scale I can change any value so I can even change rate so only in the center I have majority of the particles and at the edges I have less. So now I can change the emission rate so I get more number of particles and most of the small ones are towards the edges. So now my camera animation is going to go towards the center. Okay so let's go into the camera lock it in and see the results. Okay, as you can see the scale is a bit too high I can't really see what is at the back so I'm going to reduce the scale of the particles okay also to add more randomness I can increase the scale variance even here so my scales change there too okay Now to actually see the result which I get after rendering, let me go ahead and use a scanline render node. So I'll take the scanline renderer, uh, it goes into the scene and the camera gets connected to the camera and if I view this, I have this result. So I can play through this and as you can see it's quite fast. I can set it to proxy after saving it once. So as you can see it's quite fast. Uh, moving through the asteroid field. Okay. Now let's say that I have this but I want to change any particular property or uh, let's say I wanted a bit more variation or I wanted a dust cloud around these asteroids because uh, it is there are going to have a lot of tiny particles which you can't really see through the cam so it should look like dust. So I can use uh, particles once more to go ahead and emit any kind of dust I want. So let me go ahead and show you how I can make use of that. I'm just reorganizing a little bit so it becomes easier. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new particle emitter. And this particle emitter obviously is going to make use of the same card node which we had previously and if I go look through it you'll see that it's emitting as default like previously with the uh, same settings so I can go ahead and tell I wanted to use faces and I want it to be randomized direction and uh, I can go ahead reduce the velocity a bit increase the variation so it creates a bit more variety increase the emission rate so I have loads of particles uh, but obviously I want the uh, scale to be changed according to one of the colors there. So this is what I have. So I have loads of these particles which are coming in. Now to create the actual dust system or uh, the dust what I'm going to do is basically apply a map with a lot of noise inside it. So the computer actually uh, is going to use a lot of sprites. So let's go ahead and create another constant for this. 
I'll again set this back to a lower res. So on this constant, I'll just change the color. So it's somewhere in the white range. I'll add noise. I'll set the noise to only give me RGB and the color is going to be black. Changing a couple of, couple of properties. Adding variation. I'll add a radial. If I go to the alpha channel on radial, you can see that it's visible there. I'll go change this. So it's giving me an entire radial system there. And now I can go apply a pre mold. Okay, done. So I basically have this map which is going to be applied on all particles now. So coming back to the particles, I can set this as my particle node. Oops. Okay, so now the particles are a bit too small, so I have to increase the size. So I'll go set the size scale to around 10, let's say. So you can see loads of particles have come in. Now, there are a few things which you can do to edit uh, the transparency of these. I can go into the radial. This is the one which is giving the alpha channel. I can reduce the opacity of this radial to make them transparent. So I'll set this to 0. Point, uh, let's say 0 0.05. So it's a huge cloud of dust basically. So now if I come back to my scene and connect this emitter into the scene, you can see it's a huge dust cloud. Obviously, it does not have a frame hold right now, so I'll just go ahead. I'll Alt K it. Uh, basically, it uh, creates a duplicate. So I have a frame hold applied into the scene. Now, this uh, I can go ahead and change the colors on this if I want. Uh, let me go to the scanline render and check out what the result looks like. So you can see it's basically has a lot of dust around the asteroids. Now, if I want to actually change the color of the asteroids, I can go to the constant and change the color, but if I want to do it interactively in the emitter itself right here, uh, what I can do is go ahead and use a blend mat. Uh, again, this is explained in the Foundry's uh, particle video. You can go through that to understand what's happening. I'll set the surface blend mode to modulate. You can just hover over the surface blend option to see that modulate. Uh, what it does is it multiplies texture with the vertex color itself. So now coming to the particle system, I can go choose any color I want and all the dust gets that color multiplied on top of it. So that's the reason I kept the constant white so that I can actually add any color I want right here. So I'll just set it to blue. Obviously my favorite color is blue. So blue color dust. So that is set. As you can see it looks like there is some fog and the uh, asteroids actually do fade off going through it. Now uh, let us say that uh, these asteroids which are there in the beginning are not actually fading a lot. So I want to go ahead and edit those. Okay, here we are. Okay, there are a lot of asteroids here in the front which are not actually fading. So I want to go ahead and edit those too. So the way I, w I can do that is uh, if I come back here I'll just go change the alpha on this so I can actually see it. You can see that all the particles in the front here are too small because of which the dust is not able to cover the asteroids. So I can't really make use of the same red color which I have used in the previous particle emitter here at the bottom in the scale parameter. So instead what I would do is back in the radial system, this radial I'll tell that I only want it to give me red color so it's going to give me only red and absolutely no other channels. I'll add a new radial and this radial now is going to give me green. So let me just uh, default this out. Oops. Okay, so this one I wanted to give me only green color. So by, by the combination of red and green we are getting yellow. What I will tell is that I want it to be very harsh towards the edges. Now, I have a red channel which is very soft and I have a green channel which is sharper. So with this, if I come back to the scene, in my particle emitter for the dust, I can go ahead and tell instead of red use a green channel. And as you can see, it creates a much more elaborate dust cloud. So if I want to change it, I can come back 
uh, into the channel so I'll just set it to RGB and only green I can go ahead and change this value till I get something which I like so let's say I like this I can also use perpetually linear and then change this to a higher value uh, so just make sure it looks good to you alright okay so I have this if I come back to my scanline renderer uh, the result is going to be too harsh because the dust cloud is visible too much so back in the opacity parameter I'm going to set it to a very low value as you can see it has created my dust cloud now the only other thing I want to do is because it looks like a straight line I don't really want the camera to have that straight look so back in the camera on let's say the 50th frame where I have this rotations happening I'll just go ahead and add about a few degrees to the camera Z axis I'll just plug in let's say about 12 okay now similarly if I come to somewhere here okay as you can see it takes a bit of time to render so I can go ahead and turn off this uh, dust because that is the one which takes the maximum time to render there and hit play here to see exactly what's going on as you can see the uh, entire asteroid belt comes in at a tilt and there's an issue because the plane is no longer covering the entire section so I come back to the plane and I'll increase the size by a few units let's just tell I want three or four okay asteroids are coming in Uh, thing to note here as you can see there is this asteroid which is very low res I can see it's pixelated too much compared to anything else here even the one here at the back is pixelated too much the reason for this is the asteroid map which I created I have even low resolution images in there so because Nuke is assigning them randomly uh, even small images get scaled too much so that's when you get this issue you'll have to go through all of your images once more to see whether or not you have such problems uh, when I turn off proxy obviously the quality will increase so you don't have to worry about it too much so let's go play it once completely okay okay the last frame as you can see I don't really like this composite I want it to be a bit different so I come to the frame which actually has a keyframe on the last there okay the rotates have a keyframe in there properly and the translates have it in the wrong frame I'm just moving the translate keys to the proper 240th frame so that I can edit it only in one location so here I can go ahead change values to see which would look better okay I really like this asteroid here on the side so I'm going to keep this as my final frame uh, let's go let's save once and put this in here okay beautiful now as you can see the entire dust cloud it doesn't really look like it has a lot of variations so to get a lot of variations uh, what you can do is uh, uh, let me set this to proxy it's too slow so to get to a lot of variations what you can do is uh, back into the noise node for the texture here you can increase a gain amount and make it a harsher noise so that you can see a little bit more variations in there also turbulence gives you good values so you can see it looks better uh, you can go ahead tweak this however you want till you see what you like okay so basically I have the entire 3d 
uh, system setup. Now the next thing is I'm going to just go ahead do a simple grade and finally render this out. Now because you already know that I like blue color a lot, I'll be making sure that it looks blue in the end. So let me go ahead and add in a grade node here. I'll connect that. Uh, I definitely don't want to be working with the proxy footage when I'm trying to grade here uh, in this instance. So in this grade, uh, first thing I'll turn on the zebra striping for any out of gamut pixels. and. Uh, uh, here the grade node is arranged perfectly. First you have to set the black point, then the white point, then you do the lift, the gain, and you follow through the whole process. So first step, with the black point, I'll go change this uh, to a negative value till I get any zebra striping here. And as you can see, it's trying to redo the entire image once more, which is not exactly what I want. So let me actually go ahead, I'll uh, uh, bake this image out, write it out, and again read it in. Or I can just cache it. So I'll go to the node and cache it. So on the grid, I can go ch and start changing this. I need to make sure black clamp is off or else I will not be able to see the results. So you can, as you can see, as soon as I increase the black point, it's going off here on the sides. I definitely don't want pitch black pixels on any of my inputs. So what I will do is on the asteroid node which is coming in, I'll apply a grid node here. and. Uh, I'll increase uh, here the one thing you have to note is lift and gain. The lift works on the black values and gain works on the white. So I want to lift the blacks by let's say 0 0.01 value. So all of these become slightly light in color so therefore there is no pitch black values anywhere. I think that's a bit too much so let me decrease that. Okay, so as you can see, you can still make out a lot of details. So, perfect. So I have that grade added in there. Now coming back to the old grade. Now if I tweak, it should not go and clamp so easily. It should give me some values. Okay, that is done. Now for the white point, I need to brighten it up so that I can have some hot spots. So when I change this, as you can see, there are some hot spots being created here. So I'm just going to change it a little bit. Okay, so black and white are set. Now I can use a lift and gain to add in some kind of effect to this shot. So I want the shadows to be uh, slightly on the bluish side. So let me go to the lift. I'll set it to a bluish tone and increase it a little bit. Saturated more. Okay, I'm looking at a particular color, so basically what I did is wrong there. Okay, so let me set it somewhere here. I'll desaturate it. Okay, so it's dark bluish in color there. And I want the highlights to be warmer, so in the gain. I'm going to set this to a bit reddish tone, but not too much. Now that is done. Now overall I want it to be bluish in tone, so this dust cloud which I have, I'm going to give it a much saturated blue. So everything has that tone in there. Okay, done. Now, uh, this is pretty much done. I can go ahead and start rendering this out if I want. Now uh, one thing I can do is go ahead and add an extra level of particles, small dust debris which are going to make it look much better. So let me actually go ahead and do that. I'll set this back to proxy and um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new particle emitter. Okay. And let's go look at this in the 3D scene. As you can see, it's a single straight line still. I want to use the same old emitter which we had from the last time. So let me go ahead. Oops. I'll use that as the emitter, and as you can see, particles are being emitted from here. I don't want to make use of any, uh, let's say, uh, emission rate changes over here with this. 
I want it to be randomized, I wanted to use phases. Okay, I'm going to increase the emission rate to let's say a thousand. So I have loads of particles. And now I can go use frame hold. And I'm going to hold it on let's say the tenth frame. So this is the particle which I'm going to be making use of. I'll just change the velocity range to high so you can see it's distributed a bit more evenly. Now these particles I want them to be uh, basically a fill-in particle uh, which just gives you a bit more 3D-ish look. So to get that looking right I'll just create another constant. Let's go into the view. I'll create the smaller size 256. Actually I can go smaller than 256 for this. So let's go create a new one. I'll call this about 32. 32 cross 32 pixels. So it's a very small constant. I'll go apply a radial default and uh, I'll go 0, 0, 32, 32. So if I turn off proxy you can see this is the uh, actual object I have right now. So okay. So this one is done and if I come connect two particles in the uh, particle emitter and look at them here. Zoom in you can see that these are basically small little uh, spears, glowing spears which are visible now. I'll go into the particle emitter, I'll change the range for scale to be about 5. So I have very large ones and very small ones. Let's look at exactly what's happening uh, with these in the scene by removing the rest because uh, rest are going to take a little bit of time to render. Okay, so let's go into the scanline renderer and render this out. So as you can see the particles are a bit too large for my taste so I'll go reduce the scale for these. So these are very small and I'm going to increase the number of particles again. So I basically have a huge dust cloud of all these. Okay. Also I don't want them to be visible too much. I want them to be a bit more transparent so in the radial I'm going to reduce the opacity. Okay, perfect. So now that I have this, I can go ahead connect all the rest. Okay, so as soon as I connected it, the nuke just crashed on me. So I should be a little bit more careful. Okay, so let me just go pause this. I'll connect all of these. save that and unpause this and as you can see there are loads of particles loads of dust all the asteroids everything is in the scene and it's purely animated it's completely 3d inside new and you can pretty much do anything you want with it uh, last thing I'm going to do these particles are a bit too bright so I can go ahead and reduce this opacity of them a little bit more so they are just going to add in a slight 3D element to the scene. Okay, so now one last step. After I have actually graded it with the proper black and white values, I can add a color correct on top. And here I can tweak the shadows and highlights the way I want. So let me go ahead and again redo a little bit of the work. So the shadow region, I want it to be saturated bluish. I'm going to desaturate the rest first. Uh, the midtones, I want to add in a bit more gamma with a bluish tint. Okay. Okay, now one last step uh, for those of you uh, who had asked me last time the stars which we are being used. Uh, which we are using basically have maximum of value 1 for the stars they don't go beyond that whereas in real life the stars are actually pretty bright so if you want to get that kind of detail what you can do is add in a color lookup and what I like doing is in the master view I can go ahead take the brightest values and pump them up to around 5 or 6 or even higher depends on the look you're going for. So I kept the one value at 10 and now I can go ahead and clamp the rest. Okay. So 
So now basically what I have is this uh, star field in which there are stars which are brighter than white. So when I go on top of them, you should be able to see some points which are actually brighter than white here at the bottom which have values more than one. Uh, so when you have motion blur, they are going to give you some real nice motion blur. And also those stars will be visible through the dust cloud more easily than the rest. So pretty much this is it. Let me go ahead, take a flipbook of this and I'll show you the animation. So I'm done with the creating the flipbook, so let's see the actual animation. You should be able to see that uh, dust clouds and the asteroids and the star fields are all working pretty well together. Uh, but there is uh, there are a couple of issues like a few asteroids are very low res. So therefore when you actually come very close to them you can see that they're all pixelated which really can't be helped uh, currently because uh, I actually use a stock footage. If you want good quality, it's better to go ahead and uh, classify all your particles into different sections and have low quality ones always be small in size. So pretty much I have this entire scene set up. Now one thing you might notice is that the playback is a bit choppy. There are two main reasons for that. The first is there is no motion blur in this shot. And second, I'm recording uh, the video at 15 frames per second whereas the video is playing back at 24. So both these reasons will give you a choppy footage. So let me just go back into Nuke, summarize everything that we have uh, done till now and then I'll show you how you can get rid of the choppiness a bit too. So back in Nuke, this is the final comp I have. So uh, let me summarize all the different elements we have here. We have the 3D scene which we set up to begin with. We had the scene, the camera and the scanline renderer. We went ahead and animated this camera. We have a card which has this uh, simple uh, star field applied to it as an image. Uh, there is absolutely no shading in the entire scene. So if you have a light or anything as such set up, you need to make sure that the card is emitting all the properties. Next, uh, here I have another card which are a couple of ramps. Uh, this is basically my starter object for all the particle systems. So therefore it is the one which is being feeding all the other objects. I have a particle system which is uh, making use of the asteroid image sequence which I created. Then I have other procedural uh, astro uh, dust clouds which I created using completely uh, using just nuke. Now all these are just going in and I'm using scanline render to render them out and I'm just doing some simple color corrections. Now yeah, the, I was showing you the choppiness of the video. The main reason for the choppiness is that there is no motion blur. So let me just show you how you can get a bit better motion blur. I'll remove all the objects which are going to take a bit more time to render. Okay, let me add the asteroids. Okay, so now when you have a lot of movement in the camera, uh, you need to get motion blur to have a good looking smooth footage. So to get this motion blur, instead of adding vector blur, you'll have to be using multi-sample. The reason you have to use multi-sample is because if you are going to use vector blur because of the transparency information present in the particles, it might give you some odd results. So just for that, it's better to have multi-sample take care of it rather than doing it yourself. So now if you see there is going to be a lot of motion blur wherever the camera movement is high and it's going to give you much better results. So pretty much that's it. You can increase the sample level and try to get better results. So that's pretty much it for the entire video. Uh, what I have shown you in this video is basically how to create different particle instances using image sequences or any kind of transparent particle systems with Sprite completely within Nuke and how to render it out. So I hope you found this use video useful and uh, I'll see you in the next one.